Hey guys, welcome back to A Slice of Gaming. I'm the only Pine Time 4. We are playing Dissidia 012 Prologus Final Fantasy for the PSP, and this game is brought to you by GameAnyone.com. This game is downloadable only on the PSN network. And we are going to fight against Kafka, who, as I've mentioned before, has been rebalanced for this game. So this is when we can get to see just how rebalanced he is. And look at that, her assist is Kafka as well. Ooh, a new play thing. Okay, and his outfit here is based off of Amano's artwork. Amano's other artwork. And as you can see, Kafka is a mage character. So if you're used to, once again, other more characters that kind of get into your face, then well, you're gonna be a little bit hard to get used to here. Ultimisia, do some damage on him. So I can definitely see how Kefka was rebalanced. There's definitely some new moves that he did not have before. And holy crap. He still feels a little bit slow, as you can see, that's how he runs. This is how he runs. Amazing. <laughs> it suits him. And you know what? The guy who does the voice acting does it really, really well. I am extremely impressed. Alright. All of his moves basically refers back to in the final battle, like Havoc Wing, he'll use like the turn off my shoes. Oh, Kafka, how oh, I love you. Ah, here we go. Here is Titus. Time to deal up the hurt. Titus plays as a more of an aggressive character that really moves around at random. And something to state about Titus is that he is one of the Warriors of Cosmos that we know in the first game that have also gone over to the Warriors of Chaos in this one. And since this is a prequel, there is, there's also a reference in the first game that basically says to Jekt, because Jekt has also become a Warrior of Cosmos. So those two have kind of switched around, so to speak. There's a part in the first game where they say, Oh, Jack, don't you remember? You were once a warrior of Cosmos. And he's kind of confused because he doesn't really remember this. There's also Terra as well, too, who has gone over to the side of darkness. But hers is a little bit uh, more understandable, so to speak. Because, as we all know from the first beginning section of Final Fantasy VI, as we see, she is actually under control by Kefka with the Slave Crown. So I really quite like that little reference there. And Titus is on the side of darkness just because he can be. No, that, that's not really actually the reason, but... He's on the side of darkness because he wants to defeat his father, who is Jekt, who's on the Warrior of Cosmos. That's kind of something I don't really like about this game, is that some of the characters, they've made it a little bit too much that they are a certain way. Like, a good example is that Titus is after his dad, or... Squall is really stoic, which which he is, but it's sometimes it's a little bit too much. Speaking of Squall, he's the assist character there. We have yet to see him be in any sort of battle whatsoever. And I really hate fighting against Kuja too, just because like he is predictable, but at the same time I can't predict his spells very well. Basically going back to about Kefka and how he's been basically rebuilt. 
he's got a new arsenal of moves that just make him a little bit easier to use, I find. So he's actually a lot more enjoyable to play as, I think. Also, if you guys haven't noticed, when Ultimecia comes out, she looks a lot different than what she's actually supposed to. She's got the form of Etna, which is a woman she takes control over. So that's that's why she's kind of dressed like that. Oh shit. Interesting, I was able to cancel that. <laughs> Also, I hope I can show off Kefka's x burst because his x burst is actually really, really cool. And I mean really cool. You'll recognize just what exactly he turns into, so to speak. Ouch, that was quite a lot of damage. Okay, Kefka- Damn it, Kuja! I hate you. Lick the dirt off my shoes. All right, so round four is against Kane. And let's pick another type of battle music. Let's see if we can do something from six here. Let's go with the battle music, which they've remixed into kind of like a dancier sort of theme, so to speak. Like, it, it doesn't feel like the original at all. I enjoy it. It's a little bit strange, I have to admit. But still, nonetheless, I quite like it. Alright, assist. We'll use that. Jesus, Ultimecia. I wonder if I can get hit with my own character's assist moves. That'd actually be kind of funny. And she throws a giant, gigantic axe at me. I definitely like the changes they've made to Kefka. X-Core. If only they made him move just a little bit faster and not as wacky, but just the way he is. And that's all you can say, is that that's just the way he is. And by the way, if you guys haven't watched um, my Luminous Arc walkthrough, you might not recognize his voice, but his voice is the same actor that did Nikolai, who is extremely annoying. But that just kind of shows that these people who do the voices can just do so much more than just one character. I mean, some of them are typecast, like the guy who does Orin is typecast pretty much. And while I grab this, Ultimecia, come on and help us. And time to go into X mode. Oh yeah! Kefka's X mode is completely and totally awesome. He turns into his form that he gets from his final battle in Final Fantasy VI. Remember the command? Oh crap. Okay. Yes! The fact that he does his victory pose still in that form is totally awesome. I like Kefka. He's one of my personal favorite villains. Okay, this is a new battlefield we have actually yet to see. This is Orphan's Cradle from Final Fantasy XIII. Speaking of Final Fantasy XIII, we're actually listening to a remix of Blinded by the Light. It's mixed with developer's fate. 
Also, I hate fighting against the Cloud of Darkness as well too, because she tends to be a little bit on the spammy side. Oh shit, my assist is locked. She's one of those characters who's kind of complex to play as. You have to really get the feel for what she does, because she plays completely different from other characters. Like, you have to press the buttons in a certain timing to get it right. Like, if you press it three times, she'll do this. If you press it twice, she'll do this. If you press it once, she'll do this. So, she's kind of confusing, but as soon as you get used to her, she'll, she'll probably be a breeze. And I hate that move so much, because the CPU will spam that move a lot. It's really, really annoying. Kick. Shit. This is something that really stands out, especially about Final Fantasy XIII. As you can see, the style is kind of like wacky and crazy and futuristic, and I don't know if I really like that too much, to be honest. Just because it's really completely different. I mean, sure, I should give it more of a chance, but... It's just not my style, I guess. Red Cloud of Darkness is taking some time to get rid of. This is gonna hurt. Did I get him? Yeah, Trine is a really useful move, because regardless of where they are, it'll still attack them. Okay, let me just grab this. If you don't mind. Thank you. And also, if you didn't notice as well, that... You can destroy the stage as you move. And sometimes this will get you certain things, but that's going to be much explained when the game actually comes out. You can get random items. He needs one more hit. There you go. Or she. He, she, it, because it's genderless. Lift the dirt off my shoes! Alright, and that is Kafka! So when I come back, we will finish off the rest of the characters, so I will catch you guys later!